Tony Poulos here at Communicasia 2015 in Singapore. And today I'm with Joshua Um, who is the CTO Asia Pacific for ARIS. Joshua, great to catch up. Really, before we get going, tell me a little bit more about ARIS. I'd like to know more. Sure. So ARIS is a uh, global end-to-end uh, -end telecommunications provider. Uh, we operate in over 30 countries. Uh, we have channel partners in over 85 of those countries. And we primarily uh, focus on the network, the cloud, and the CPE products, uh, encompassing video and data, as well as the software solutions. So what are the trends in TV at the moment, in the TV arena? Are we seeing things changing dramatically? Yeah, I mean, TV, um, as people are used to it, used to be like a consumptive, linear kind of uh, experience, right? Uh, what's happening now is, as you know, there is a lot of over-the-top content coming through. Uh, and at the same time, it's interactive. So we can collect a lot of data as to what the uh, consumers are doing. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about big data, I think, later on. But um, one of the things that ARIS does is we, every year we do a consumer entertainment index. Uh, and that type of um, report gives us great insights as to what our consumers are doing uh, with the video content. So one of the big things that we uh, discovered this year was uh, binge viewing is quite prevalent uh, amongst our viewers. Uh, and we also recognize that it's a uh, solo activity, uh, very much like reading a, a reading a book. You know, it's immersive, it's time consuming. So that's a very uh, you know, good analogy of what's happening on the video space. We're, we're seeing a lot of new players in the TV space, uh, particularly over the past few years, to, to accommodate these new habits. But who are the new players and, and what, what effect are they having? Right, so television uh, on, on the video instance, as you know, players like Google, uh, Apple, uh, are really uh, pushing the over-the-top content. Uh, but there are you know, players like Roku who are becoming very much um, you know, significant in terms of getting viewerships as well. But then you also have like the end uh, programmers, like the BBCs of the world, who are actually going direct to the customer because now they have a medium to do that through the internet, right? So what Aris is really trying to do is help all these players in the ecosystem in terms of getting the delivery of the right content to all the devices. So you know, our mantra really is to have the content everywhere, anytime that you want it, right? But how is, how is TV evolving to cope with these changing habits of the viewers? So it's interesting you mentioned that. The normal experience of watching TV is, as I said, mentioned before, through the uh, entertainment index, we can see people's habits are changing. So no longer are you just watching TV in front of your lounge, right? You're watching TV on your, on your phone, on your uh, tablets, right? And uh, not only that, you know, you can watch that, you know, in terms of format as in a long-term, you know, long-term format, like a movie, right? Or you can watch it in little clips. So really, people are utilizing their time depending on you know, what they want to watch. So if I'm at a bus stop, for example, I might be liable to watch like a two minute video clip on YouTube, for example, right? If I have a bit more time on a plane, then I might be downloading a whole movie or, or few movies and watching that, right? So I think in, in, in terms of the video arena, like the flexibility that, you know, the industry offers now, you know, it really is up to the consumer on what they want to do. And really we're allowing the power to go to the end consumer with how they consume their video content. You mentioned earlier big data. You dropped that in the middle of the equation. Right. How was big data being used in television? Because it seems a bit of an anomaly for me. Right. So big data, as you know, is a, uh, a term that's uh, really come out of the internet uh, era with the likes of Google and Yahoo. And really talks about, you know, how do you collect the data, uh, store that data, and analyze that data? And you might be wondering, well, how does that really play into television, right? So how, how that plays in is that interactivity and the amount of data that you can collect from a video ecosystem is immense. So if you think about the video uh, ecosystem, right, you've got the application layer or the presentation layer, then you have the control layer, then you have the video layer, and then you have the actual network layer, right? So, you know, talking techno, that's what you have. So in each of these layers, you can actually instrumentize the layers to collect data, right? So if you think about uh, on the application or the presentation layer, you know, what you watch, uh, for how long you watch it, uh, what, are you, what are your preferences, all that information can be collected. At the same time, with the uh, technology such as network DVR, right, and uh, uh, advanced uh, ad insertion, you can actually collect information about what 
types of you know, content are people watching and how are they storing that content? When do they get turned off the content, right? So all this information is free flowing now in the TV ecosystem, right? Yeah. So what we do is the big data uh, technology is being utilized. So you talk about the Hadoops, the MapReduce, which is common industry term. We're actually applying that in the TV industry to collect that data and make insightful uh, data available to the operator so that they can actually action that. So that, that really is the underlying big data uh, analytics uh, in, the, in, in terms of the television world. I've never uh, seen TV as an interactive experience. You said it was, but what are these experiences that consumers can expect in interactivity? Right, right. very good question. So when you think about uh, turning on a TV set these days, right, it's all about uh, personalization. And what that means is recommendation, for example. So how easy is it for me to find the content that I want, right? How easy is it for content to be recommended by the provider to basically make it easier for you to select what you want to watch? So when you think about that type of data being presented to you, that means they have to understand, or the, the programmers have to understand what are your viewing habits, right? So in that way, there is this two-way interactivity going on. And if you think about what the OTT providers are doing right now, they're collecting a lot of information on your, on your viewing habits, right? So one example might be that, you know, if I turn the TV set on and we've got a great product in uh, active video, uh, in terms of the UI, it'll show you what are the top 10 um, programs being watched, right, right now. So what that means is you can turn the TV on, you might not have an idea what you want to watch, but guess what? You can just go, oh, these are the top 10 people are watching right now. So if there's a program that you haven't seen before, you might be interested to go, oh, I have, I have never heard of that, but if people are watching it, it might be good, right? Yeah. So that type of interaction is, 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 is the interactivity we are talking about. There's information being uh, collected, right, by the um, service providers and the content providers, right, so that they can make that information relevant and actionable, right? And how can operators target their market more effectively with all of these things to mm. contend with? Who are they going to turn to? So when you, when you think about the old television model, right? Um, if you think about, there's three major players, right? You've got the viewer themselves, right? You've got the actual uh, service provider that's providing the network. And then you've got the content providers, you know, making the content. If you think about what used to happen, um, you used to sit there and watch whatever was being broadcasted. You had no input as to changing that uh, content to, you know, what, whatever you wanted to watch. But what, in, and in terms of Nielsen uh, ratings, you, know, you, you basically had a system of trying to understand what were the viewers watching. Yeah. But that was really a statistical uh, tool versus a, an accurate tool about what every consumer on that system was doing. So if you think about it now, the technology is available where you can actually measure all that and you can collect that information, right, and analyze it through the big data analytics that I spoke about. So all that information, is there to be had and it really is about how do you take that information and make it insightful and this is where Aris really comes in and says hey look we understand the television industry right we understand people's viewing habits um, you know we can actually make that work for you as long as you know you, you want to adapt adopt the, uh, the big data uh, analytic system right well I'm going to be looking at television in a completely different way after this conversation right. Josh thanks so much for explaining that to me no problems thank, thank you, you.